Some reptiles look hilariously silly, look a little bit dumb, but in the cute way. So today I wanna go over the top five most unique, silly, cute looking, kinda dumb looking reptiles. My name's Adam, this is Erwin, you're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. So just to be clear, I'm not making fun of these reptiles. I don't think any reptile is actually stupid or dumb. I just think that some reptiles look a little bit dumber than others. And we'll start off, number five, blue tongue skinks. I love blue tongue skinks. If you watch the channel for more than five minutes, you know that I talk about these guys nearly every week. I love them, they're great, I have to, but they look derpy. They just look like they don't really know what's going on. They look very silly, a little bit clumsy, the way that they move as well. They're amazing pets. And I wanna go over each of these five reptiles, why they're amazing and why you should get them and not just like take a big steaming dump on them, you know? <laughs> These potatoes with legs are fascinating to me because, well, they've got that bright blue tongue. They come in a few different localities. So you can get some from Indonesia, you can get some from Australia. And the way that they're gonna be set up and their uh, care requirements is gonna be very different depending. So this is an Indonesian, this is Irwin. Irwin's a big, big unit, this guy is huge. And he's gonna need something like a four by two by two, something like that, or four by two by one. Something that has about eight square feet of space on the ground. There's a whole care guide up here if you wanna watch that. But in general, they're gonna be a little bit more moist, more humid is the way I should, uh, I, I should phrase it. They'll need more humidity than their cousins from Australia. The Northerns and the Easterns, those guys are gonna need humidity levels closer to like 40-ish. Again, in the care guide, I, I break down the difference between the two and the exacts. But they're much, I think, easier for someone like me who lives in a very humid environment. It's not warm where I live, but it's very humid. So humidity in the house is always gonna be 50, sometimes 60 in the summer, 70. So it's easier with these. So that's the, the difference between the two, really. The temperatures are pretty similar. Size is pretty similar. Tails on these Indonesians are absolutely ridiculously long. Look how long that is. But this is one of the bigger blue tongue skinks you'll ever see. They normally don't get quite this big. He's about 32 inches but he looks kind of derpy and the way that they move is hilarious to me. But but be aware if you get a blue tongue skink, they're they might they might poo on you. So, new co-host, this is Diglett. We're going to move on to number 4, chameleons. Now, this isn't a chameleon, obviously this is an African fat tail which deserve I think a uh, an honorable mention cuz they look a little bit derpy, but you're not going to be you're not going to be on the list. You can't even figure out how to get on my shoulder. Here. Chameleons are on the list because they look silly. They look just so silly. And I think they're beautiful, don't get me wrong, they're absolutely gorgeous. But I think that chameleons have this googly, the googly eyes, like it just, I can't get over the googly eyes and the pinchy hands, you know, it just, they look, they look like when they were created, they were just spare parts thrown together, like, eh, this'll do, this can be a creature now. But chameleons are maybe the most unique thing ever. And if that's what you're into, if you like unique looking reptiles, Look no further, there's very few things, maybe frilled dragons, but chameleons are by far the most specialized of reptiles. And I know there's a bunch of other ones that are super specialized, but I mean, in terms of the way that they look, you look at a chameleon, you know exactly what it is, a mutant of a creature. Now these are beautiful, obviously, and I love chameleons, but they are also very difficult to take care of, or not very, but can be difficult to take care of. So they're not as easy as say, an African fat tail who can't even figure out how to stand you can't figure out how to stay on the hand. Maybe you are on the list. And in some circles, they are known to be intelligent or thought to be intelligent, but just I think the way that they look. And this list is all about derpy reptiles who look so dumb that they're cute. And I think chameleons really fall in line with this. Especially if you look at like a Jackson's chameleon, which literally has horns on its face. This thing has horns on its face. It looks so silly, so silly. They can't figure out what they want to be, which way they want to look, their hands barely work, their tongue can't stay in their mouth. Hilarious. Chameleons are hilarious. Silly looking reptile number three, tortoises. Now not all of them, because if you look at a Galap or an Aldabra, these are majestic looking creatures. These things look like if a horse and a turtle had a baby, this is what it would be. These things are beautiful, but 
Have you ever seen a Redfoot tortoise or a Herman's tortoise or a Russian tortoise or just some sort of tortoise that kind of looks around like, what? Where am I? All the time? I personally think that tortoises are some of the goofiest looking animals that have ever been created. Instead of having like a body, they have a shell that they go into, which is true for all tortoises and, tor and turtles. But turtles have like some sort of intent when they look. Well, these shots don't really do it justice. These ones look a little bit derpy too, but I think tortoises just, because they're not proficient in swimming, they just can barely walk properly, right? They just kind of bumble around like the drunk guy at the bar at 3 a.m. They just mosey around eating grass in their shells, just like these cute little shell boys. And I think that they are adorable. And I want a tortoise, man, a, a red foot tortoise is on, high on my list of animals I would love to have because I think that they're fascinating. They're amazing. The reason that you'd want a tortoise is because they're great. Tortoises, although they do have beaks and they can bite you and they could scratch you, in general, they're known for being pretty darn gentle. And I love gentle creatures. I am not the guy who's gonna go and get a blood python that's gonna strike at me every five seconds. I like the animals that you can handle or with tortoises, I guess it's not handling, but you can be around and you don't have to worry about them trying to take a pop at you every five seconds. And again, they're gorgeous. I think I've said that word 45 times throughout this entire video, but they look absolutely beautiful. And there's a shell pattern for everybody, a color and a design and a pattern that basically anyone could enjoy. Just pick which one that you like. And of course their requirements totally depends. If you want something larger, get a sulcata. These things, you're gonna need a yard basically or a giant room in your house to do it properly. Or maybe you want something a little bit smaller, right? Maybe you want a Russian tortoise, something like that. And it depends on the atmosphere, not atmosphere, but climate in your area. Do you have a warm and humid climate? Do you have a warm and dry climate? It depends because some tortoises need 60, 70, 80% humidity and others need very low humidity, 30, 40%. So it just depends. There's something for everybody. They're amazing, but they look pretty silly. Goofy looking reptile, number two, frogs and toads. And I know they're amphibians. They're not actually reptiles. I, I know, I know, but look at them. Just look at them. And there are some that actually look pretty cool, right? Leaf frogs, right? They look amazing. They don't look derpy at all. They look like they're about to murder you in your sleep. But there are derpy looking ones, like these spade foot toads that I have. I love these things. I absolutely love them. I did a whole video about them up here. You can take a watch. I'm a tree. I'm, I'm a tree, apparently. Best arboreal lizard, African fat-tailed geckos. But I think that toads and frogs in general, most of them, especially if you look at like, Pixie frogs or Pac-Man frogs or most toads to be honest, they look hilariously inept for life. If you look at like a budgets frog or a marine toad, these things look like they don't even, if they didn't have eyes, they look like they would just be an inanimate object, a clump of mud or something. Now, of course, Pac-Man frogs can be beautiful. There's a bunch of different ones. And I think all of these animals are beautiful to look at in their own way, but these look like if you found out this is the only animal in the world that doesn't have a brain, you wouldn't be surprised. They, uh, yeah. And I'm not saying that they're actually dumb, but they look, they don't look all that bright. You know, I don't think that they're winning any math league competitions. No Mensa members are frogs or toads. But as far as amphibians go, toads are kind of my favorite. They, I like frogs too, but toads... I don't know, they're just a little bit easier maintenance for most most of the time, right? My spade foot toads, they're very unique. They have this really cool kind of uh, projection on the bottom of their feet that allow them to dig, which is why they're called spade foot toads. Again, I highly recommend watching the video. It was probably the best video I've ever done. I, I love these guys. And they're beautiful to look at. Look at their eyes. Look at the way that they move, derpy. But their eyes look intent. But then you zoom out from their eyes and they look derpy. So it's like the best of both worlds, in my opinion. And they come in a bunch of different sizes and they come in a bunch of different requirements in terms of their care so there's some for everybody and of course if you want something arboreal well get a tree frog if you want something that's aquatic get a budgets frog it's huge or if you want something that you can feed mice to once a week or once a month or whatever the care guide's supposed to say get a get a pac-man frog and if you want something that looks like it might eat your whole family when you're sleeping well there's malayan leaf frogs Ugh. silly dumb derpy looking reptile number one Arabian sand boa. You knew this was coming, I imagine. If you've been into reptiles for very long, you know what these are, you've seen this exact picture, and I think we're gonna wrap up all sand boas into this because all of them have this kind of 
similar look where they have these chubby short little bodies for the most part they just kind of sit in the sand all day just kind of look around with the eyes are on the top of their head they just look so goofy now arabian sand boas are not as common as say a kenyan sand boa but they're really cool they're a little bit rare a little bit expensive they only get to like a foot and a half right between a foot and a foot and a half so they stay really small they eat great amazing most sand boas do and they strike sideways so it's unique it's different whereas with most reptiles you'll see them kind of coil up boom they'll strike it that way or i mean hognose snakes sometimes strike sideways too but mostly if you're thinking of something that strikes weird or has a different type of movement when it eats sand boas are definitely for you and they're so easy, so easy. Some people don't even keep standing water with them. I recommend you keep standing water with everything because they're creatures who need water, but they get most of their water, if not all of it, from their food, from the mice or the rat that you feed it. Mice, probably, because they stay small enough. And their substrate, just a dry, loose substrate. Some people use just straight up play sand. Play up, straight up play sand, that's it. You don't have to worry about impaction if you're using the right type of sand, so let's squash those comments right away. That's it. Dangle a mouse once a week, look at it. I mean, you're gonna be mostly looking at a tank full of sand, but otherwise, that's number one. Arabian sand, like, look at this thing. Derpy, derpy, derp. So what do you think? Was this a good video topic? Throw it down there in the comment section below. I take all the video ideas from down there, and a special thank you to the Patreon supporters who give me early feedback. I kind of know how the video is going to do or if it's going to be received well because the Patreon supporters are freaking awesome. You get to see videos early, you get extra unboxing videos and vlog style videos and discounts on the merch, which you can buy in this link right here. This is the comfiest sweater I've ever bought, honestly. Just, okay, hit subscribe. See you on Thursday.